Hey folks, I'm HP and this is Dr. Pink and today we are going to talk about the magic of long guitar notes. So what's up? But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, follow me on Telegram, follow me on Instagram and become a member of the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Link is in the description box below. Yo, so the magic of long guitar notes. I'm gonna show you what I mean first with playing. with long notes the, the the long notes in your soloing especially when you play with distortion they make the big thing if you're top or flop <laughs> I must say uh, a lot of players think as the fast runs but it's not the fast runs if you don't control the long notes uh, it doesn't sound cool the runs just are cool when you have the long notes and then you add somewhere runs which get on the point to a long note but today we only talk about the magic of the long notes because there are a few things which probably you guys never paid attention to that's why this is a must-have video from the must-have series check the the playlist as well with the must-have videos not mustard <laughs> not mustard I must have because it's for everybody on any playing level. The long notes are the big difference. The way you control them, the way you control your tone. <laughs> the way you control your playing and your expression. So let's get started now. So long notes means that you control the time. And the first uh, mistake literally everybody of you makes is uh, if you play a long note you just play a note keep it and then stop somewhere but the trick is to stop it exact at a certain spot i'll show you what i mean So what was the difference between the first and the second example? I can tell you the first, that's why I'm not going on close you because um, it's not really about the notes I'm playing, it's about what you are doing. Um, this track is in D minor um, or D major, whatever you want. You can take with any one, but I would recommend a mid-tempo uh, track. So uh, what was now the big difference between the first and second note? The first note started on one and ended on four, it's exactly on four. It's like, you see the count, one, two, three, four, uh, sorry, on one, just the four is included. And the second one started on two and ended on two. And that made it sound different, even you play the same thing. These are things you have to pay attention to. <laughs> Two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See, by controlling the time, I can control my expression. So I start at either on one, stop on one, or I start on on one, stop on three. Let's try start on one, stop on four, and second start on two, stop on one. <laughs> See, 
sounds totally different even I'm playing the same note all the time. The second thing which is important, if you play long notes, that doesn't mean you have to do nothing in the, that time frame. Try to make it sound more exciting, like what I often do is I accelerate the vibrator till the end of the note. So, one, two, three, four, accelerate, and then stop either with a damp here or pull away or... So that the, the note really has defined ending point. If you work with delay, which I do in this case, the delay set on the beat of the song so it repeats and if you don't stop exactly on the time frame the repeating thing uh, which comes is not in time that's one of the reasons why you have to do that but even if you switch off the delay it's still important same thing with our delay <laughs> Makes your your playing more defined and makes you sound more what you that you're convinced what you're doing. And it's not really easy to play, start to count and start to explore how it sounds when you start to figure play a long note as it is started on count one. Then next time start on count two. We can do start on one and two and then three. That is see how the same note sounds different if you start on one, two or three. Oh, we also do four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now I played runs, really simple stuff, licks that you will probably also know, and then they stand out like this. Out of before you build up something, and suddenly something comes, you go back to the long notes. That's the the, the expressing expressing different polarities. You start with long notes. It's like space. You have a lot of space, and suddenly something comes. They go to this expression then go to back to this t expression that's basically what is really important when you have a when you have a great expression on lead guitar now the other thing which is also important especially when you work with um, distortion in the in the low positions well also here with the vibrator, with accelerating the vibrator, you make the overtones come. The longer you keep it, see how the overtones come? And when in the sound, it's really cool. Let's give more distortion now. By putting up the vibrator, the longer the note was going on, the more it was putting up the intensity. This way it doesn't didn't sound uh, boring. And there's really simple things which you also can do, even if you just started playing guitar, you control your long notes. Now let's do um, bendings. Bendings, of course, th this uh, is a little bit more difficult. Like, oops. <laughs> So here you have to have the vibrator, even have the band. You can make the, 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 the note long and go to a certain point and then stop. So but you have to count. <laughs> Two, three, four. Then stop on, as I said, on a beat. More high bending. Let's take more distortion. Mm. 
even higher. Same thing here. The longer the note gets, the more intense it has to be. Uh, that's why I switched to more distortion because uh, the sustain was going away with less distortion uh, with the bendings. But it's the same, th uh, same thing. Yeah. Another method is to highlight the bending is played three times. You, you say, like, say, you announce it with two bendings, and the third is going to be the long one. So, like, uh, <laughs> see? And this way, you, you create again this dynamic shift, this drama, this drama, this drama rama. <laughs> That's always a good time. In this case, I played a little another figure, but it's always this the power of three. If you want to highlight the bending like extremely, you play three times either one, two, three, or I did. I made a little figure and then. Again, twice, three. It's always the power of three to highlight the bending. See how it works? This is really important stuff to know. Um, maybe something additional. Um, playing nothing is also a long note. <laughs> Think about this. That's the last tip here for the magic of the long notes. I mean, it's really a simple thing to do, but it's extremely effective. Even if you cannot play so many runs, you play a long note, <laughs> then you want to go to this note here. This one here. And then you use this phrase to go to the upper note and play the long note again. Just by using a, a, a connecting little phrase from one long note to the other long note, this just widens up your playing. It's really awesome for any level. And the more intense you get into that, the more you consciously control your long notes, the better you will sound. Now the last tip of the, um, today <laughs> is playing nothing is also music. What does that mean? I'm going to show you now. You play nothing, but try to listen where the, the new note has to come. So, so I'm going to start somewhere. Maybe let's play it again. Now on two, one, two. don't play mean you you have a pause it's also music why because playing nothing you let the other <laughs> I mean your band will love you for that 
because then the, you can at least hear what the rhythm guitar is doing or what the drum player is, <coughs> is doing. And the, <coughs> the audience probably also want to know what the other guys are doing. So it's not always about soloing, it's not always about you, it's about interaction with the other instruments. And if you control the long notes, while doing the long notes, try to listen to your bandmates or to the backing track and try to interact and t try to feel where the next note shall come. And not just noodle around. I mean, noodling is cool, but uh, it gets boring after all. If you, if you make music, you interact with the music, you listen when the next note comes. And it's probably more challenging than you think. For the advanced players among you, you probably think, oh, I mean, this is not really challenging for me. But I can tell you, <coughs> it's extremely challenging to know exactly from the inside where the next note shall come. You have to be totally alert, totally into music, feel it, where the next note comes and which it shall be. Because when you have long notes, when you play runs, like, I don't know. <laughs> you have no clue what I did. I also didn't know what I was just noodling around. But if you know exactly what you want to do, you control exactly how the overtones develop in the tone, when does it stop and where does it go? This is extremely challenging from the musical way. Maybe not from the technical way, but uh, we are doing music, we are not doing whatever. Now I skip the word now for that. Probably I get a strike for that. <laughs> it starts with M. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, uh, if some of you know which <laughs> word I mean, you can write it in the comments. Yeah, we used that was a joke when I did the music studies. Um, that is w don't do that try to make music try to um, listen to the others try to express what it wasn't and then when you start to work like this suddenly you notice oh the stuff i play before is totally not necessary and it doesn't fit there if it goes if you have a run or two runs a noodling run fits somewhere it's cool but if, if you just noodle around because you don't know what else to do, it's not cool. So the magic in music is the magic of the long notes. That's the... That's what I want to tell you about here in this tutorial. So three, three things I said. Yeah, good. That's basically what I wanted to say. Um, at the end, I'm going to play the sequence to this track that you get an idea what I mean. Um, if you want to download the backing track and the... Uh, the tabs, well, <laughs> the few examples I did here, uh, then you find them in the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Uh, join there anyway, make the premium membership upgrade to support our community. We're growing, we're getting a little guitar community. We love guitar playing and uh, with that way you really support our work and it's really cool. Yeah, follow me on Telegram. I love HP, Cra I'm HP Crazy there. Um, Instagram, yeah, I do still, in, but I love Telegram, I must say. Uh, join me there. Um, Facebook, I have a lot of followers there, but I don't really do Facebook anymore. I don't like it so much. Yeah, write me a review on Google Maps, that would be great. HP Crazy Guitar Academy. And now I'm going to play a sequence for you to end this tutorial. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.